When firefighters arrive at a scene, they expect to fight fires, not the people they're sent to save. But assaults against firefighters and EMS workers are plaguing departments all across the country, including right here in South Carolina. Our Katie Cammon breaks down what our local first responders are dealing with and tells us why researchers say the problem is only going to get worse. For Lieutenant David Scoggins, working at Georgetown County Fire and EMS involves risk. Saving lives and fighting fires comes with its share of danger. But one danger he didn't anticipate, getting attacked by the very people he's trying to help. I'm just struck in the head multiple times, uh, kicked. In the 13 years Scoggins has worked for Georgetown County Fire and EMS, he says he's been assaulted six times. In his 38-year career, that number is more than triple. And during these assaults, Scoggins is locked in the ambulance alone as the patient punches, grabs, kicks, and brawls. In the back of the ambulance, there's nowhere to go. We have no help until the driver realizes that there's a tr problem in the back of the truck and can get pulled over and get back where he can help you. But a lot can happen in that time. Scoggins isn't the only one who's getting attacked while caring for a patient or helping on scene. Chief James Falkenhagen says they're seeing around 10 to 12 violent assaults per year. It's about 10 to 12 times too many. That means on average, nearly every month, one of their employees is attacked trying to save someone's life. It's something that we're really anxious about. We were called there to help somebody, and, and that's our intent when we go there, um, is, to, is to be there for somebody to help, to help our community. For many first responders, the attacks almost seem inevitable. It's not a matter of if it's going to happen, it's a matter of when. Lieutenant Alan Holmes says crews know there's a difference between a medical episode and an intentional aggressive assault. It's that second category causing the concern. Instances of assaults have grown so much that there's actually a training course out there. When you're at the point where you have to teach, you know, EMS providers how to defend themselves, that shows there's a problem nationwide. Researchers at Drexel University agree there is a serious problem at hand. Between you know, 57 and 93% of fire and EMS responders have experienced an act of verbal or physical violence at least once in their career. Drexel's Center for Firefighter Injury Research and Safety Trends, or FIRST Center, examines the violence and hazards these first responders experience. Executive Director Dr. Jennifer Taylor says part of the problem stems from a growing number of calls. Since 1980, they've found calls for medical services to fire departments have gone up by 420 percent. But the number of firefighters and EMS personnel has not increased at the same rate. We're doing much, much more, which much, much less, and that stresses the fire service. Obviously, the community is stressed. That's why they're calling the fire department. And when those things come together, you have a perfect storm for violence. This violence, Taylor says, has far-reaching implications beyond physical injuries. When they get back to quarters or when they go home, there's a price to pay. And if we are not giving them appropriate resources to recover from stressful events that they experience or just the constant need for service that our communities are asking for. They're going to break and then we're going to break as a society because they're not going to be there for us when we need them. Taylor says there are solutions. Making sure department policy allows first responders the autonomy to remove themselves from dangerous situations and training them how to tackle the mental toll of the job and how to de-escalate situations. We need to make sure we're looking out for those people who do a lot of the work that is very hazardous, very emotionally demanding, and we need to make sure we can track their injuries and their experiences and their exposures so that we can prevent it. But at Georgetown Fire and EMS, they believe the true solution comes from the community and making sure people know the impacts their behavior and choices make on first responders. We're there to help. I mean, we're, we're trying to help somebody. We, we're not trying to be part of the problem. We're trying to help resolve the problem. For Life Five Investigates, I'm Katie Kamen.